Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The 11th of April 1900 is a landmark date in the history of naval warfare. It was the day the United States acquired its first practical submarine, designed by J.P. Holland. This submarine had a dual propulsion system. It uses batteries to run an electric motor for underwater travel and was propelled by gasoline when cruising on the surface. Additionally, it had a coning tower, separate main and auxiliary ballast systems, a tube for firing torpedoes, a streamlined hull for simpler submerged movement, and several other features. Submarines became more important in subsequent decades, growing larger, faster, more heavily armed, and diving deeper than previous versions. Still, they were all built using Holland's design template until the advent of nuclear power. Submarines can practically be spacious and massive, with some, like the Ohio class, measuring nearly two football fields long and standing seven stories tall and a width equivalent to a three-lane highway. With the introduction of the submarine, a unique class of ships was sailing and by the eve of World War I, Holland and Holland-inspired vessels were a part of the large naval fleets worldwide. From experimental beginnings, testing and training of naval personnel to essential assets, submarines revolutionized naval warfare. The submarine houses hundreds of personnel in a steel tube for months at a time, and the work is focused on several different areas and activities. Inside a submarine, the control room, the underwater equivalent of a surface ship's bridge, is the brain, where all the decisions are made and passed to the crew. There's a coning tower, which is a small, watertight structure above the control room, from which the commanding officer would command the submarine during submerged attacks. The bridge is the highest point on the Koning Tower, providing better visual navigation and signaling of any interference on the surface. There has been a profound transformation in the technology that gives submarines vision. From periscopes with lenses, mirrors, and prisms, to sophisticated electro-optical devices dependent on sensors, lasers, and fiber optics, the underwater vision has developed over time. Periscopes are still in use as they can be fitted with video cameras or other means of collecting data. The ability to see above the surface makes the periscope essential for surveillance, intelligence gathering, and reconnaissance missions. They allow visual search for nearby objects and threats when the submarine is at a relatively shallow depth and retract into the hole when not in use. The torpedo is one of the most lethal weapons on a nuclear submarine. Torpedoes are fired against other submarines or ships.
It is an explosive weapon that moves beneath the surface of the water or not far from it and detonates when it is near or in contact with the target. Four, two, four. The torpedo tube of the submarine features a breech door that may be configured to ensure the torpedoes are aligned both radially and axially. The firing or ejecting end has an opening into the water that is known as a muzzle door. Torpedoes can be loaded into the tube by being pushed forward into it using a hydraulic system. The breech door is opened and the torpedo is placed into the tube once the muzzle door has been shut. To drain out all the water introduced during the last torpedo fire, a system of drains and valves are present at the breech end of the weapon before opening the breech door. The inner door is then shut and secured, while the torpedo receives targeting information from the submarine's fire control system. Roll on breach ring, tube two, stand clear. Clear. Standing the bridge rails, clear aft. Clear forward. The torpedo is fired out of the tube and at the target using a system of valves and gauges that include an impulse tank charged by the submarine's high pressure air system. The torpedo can occasionally swim out on its own, but is often launched by pushing water behind it. Thanks to the technological developments, a modern torpedo can now destroy a target at a distance of 40 kilometers and a speed of roughly 50 knots, with more destructive force than a missile. Through a program called SYNCAX, the United States Naval Forces instruct their men to use these lethal weapons. During this training, the Navy personnel can practice gunnery, missile exercises, torpedo accuracy, and special warfare operations while using actual ammunition on mock targets. They can also focus on strategic training possibilities with multinational troops and use real-world hardened targets in at-sea live fire exercises. Submarines are essential to keeping a strong military. It is strategically essential to be able to send a military force to a region undetected. It also implies that neutralizing an opponent's underwater forces becomes crucial, making the use of anti-submarine weapons just as crucial as the submarines themselves. The core of anti-submarine warfare is the combination of sonar technology to locate submarines and depth charges to destroy them. Active and passive sonar are both commonly utilized to detect the acoustic signature of a submarine. However, the creation of nuclear submarines with the ability to launch ballistic missiles contributed to the continued development of anti-submarine warfare strategies. The MAR-48 and other advanced guided torpedoes from the latest generation of anti-submarines can locate targets by listening for their distinctive signatures using active or passive sensors. Effective warfare against submarines still relies on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, which are carried out using a variety of sensors to find and monitor an adversary ship's acoustic activity. Modern acoustic detecting technology is equally effective by air as it is by sea.
The P-3 Orion, an anti-submarine aircraft deployed by the U.S. Navy for maritime surveillance, is one of such a network of planes and surface vessels that participate in modern warfare against submarines. The Lockheed P-3 Orion is a four-engine turboprop aircraft capable of reaching a top speed of 411 knots. It has numerous sensors to detect submarines, including sono buoys and the use of its tail to detect variations in the Earth's magnetic field due to the presence of a submarine. It can stay on station long enough to collect data and track submarines. One of the primary ways for P-3 Orion to track submarines is by using sono buoys. The airplane drops a buoy at a location suspected of submarine activity. They are launched in canisters that descend using a parachute. The sono buoy lowers into the ocean and listens for the sound of an underwater vessel as a transducer and radio transmitter are deployed to capture and broadcast underwater noises to the airplane. The P-3 Orion's crew compares the sono buoy data to known submarines and their acoustic characteristics after receiving the auditory information. Oceans and water bodies provide the largest combat field, and apart from the submarines, there are several other threats, such as mines, that can be used to force access to coastal zones and facilitate the enemy's attack. Sea mines are deadly weapons that may be difficult to discover and difficult to neutralize and they have the most devastating ability to damage submarines and surface ships. Using a remotely operated unmanned mine detecting vehicle is one of the main ways to locate and detonate mines at a distance without endangering sailors. The control systems on board the Parent Mine Countermeasure, or MCM, ships are used to steer mine detection vehicles, which are first used to locate the mines using the sonar of the parent ship. Even the most advanced seizure mines can't detect the vehicle due to its negligible magnetic and auditory fingerprints. The long body of the vehicle is propelled by a central electro-hydraulic system, which also powers its thrusters and uses syntactic foam to provide buoyancy, while fiberglass serves as the exterior fairing of the streamlines. When in use, the vehicle handling system uses the mine hunting sonar for visual identification of objects in the water and to make initial contact with the target mine before the vehicle is released. When the object is in range, the detection vehicle transmits a real-time video view of the target. The strategic importance of controlling the waterways is imperative to military missions, making the technologies of protecting the ocean bodies by the Navy extremely crucial. The threats can silently come at any time and unseen which requires continual improvement in the methods to neutralize threats. That's 
the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.